That's a Chinook. Chinook salmon. Oh my gosh. What's happening everyone? I'm out on Lake Purrumbeet today. Um, I've just got out here and it's pretty calm and it's very bright which is not ideal. Calm isn't ideal because the boat's not going to be drifting very well so I won't cover much water when the fishing, when it's winter and you're fishing percentages it is a lot about water coverage. You just got to find those few fish that want to eat for you um, and you know brown trout in the bright is hard. Um, but look, we'll tick along. There are some clouds on the horizon, so hopefully something happens. Probably not gonna be as many fish as if it was overcast, windy, lovely conditions where you'd expect to catch a few. When it is bright and tough and it's freezing cold in winter like it is here, you know, you're just looking for that, that chance or two. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. I've got my setup. I'll run you through that when I start fishing, but for now I'm gonna idle around, have a look at some water, maybe kill a little bit of time. Um, until I get a bit of wind, a bit more breeze, uh, which feels like it's kicking in, and um, yeah, and we'll try and find a fish. All right, so what I've started with today, I've got 10 foot eight weight, I've got type five sweep here on as my line. I'll put the links in the bio. I've got one coral streamer there, it might come off pretty quickly because it feels a bit bright for him. And then I've got an olive damsel on the point, which is just a, big olive marabou streamer so that kind of doubles for bait a bit of everything the bait oh that just got caught there the uh the bait in this lake is very olive a lot of the australian smelting galaxia have olive tinges to them so i do like having um having olive streamers here so i've just come out wide i haven't actually come out for any reason other than i've got to start somewhere and there's a bit of riffle on the water the light's still low ish so maybe there's a few fish still high out here um but you got to start somewhere so i thought i'll start here get into the rhythm give me a chance to look around and see what's actually happening on the lake so we'll uh we'll see Oh, geez, I just saw one way out there blow up on some bait fish. <laughs> that is cool. That's why sometimes you just got to start somewhere and have a look around. And you might see something that gives you a bit of confidence. Yeah, that's right. In Trentham. Well, guys, I didn't have the camera recording because I was on my phone to my mum because of all the disasters we've had at home at Trentham. And I've just hooked a fantastic fish. He followed the fly out of this pocket over here. It is a really good one. Very, very soft take, which isn't uncommon in, in winter because often they're quite lethargic. Oh, two flies, 10 foot apart. It's a really, really big one. I'm so nervous. <laughs> oh, see the big boil there. Come on, mate. Oh, I'm hoping he's got it way down because he ate that so softly. I think it was just a big inhale. He followed the flies out. I saw the boil when he ate it. I think that's a really big rainbow. 
I haven't caught one of them in here for ages. Oh, that's a lovely trout. Oh, oh stay out of there. Olive Damsel does it again. Come on. That's such a beautiful fish. It's a big, big dark rainbow. I'm so nervous because in these conditions I can see the fly there. You don't get many opportunities when it's bright and calm like this. Come on mate, stay up. Oh, got him. That's a fantastic fish. Oh wow. That is a beautiful, big, dark, mean rainbow trout. Look at him. That is an absolute cracker. Oh, he's so dark. And look at the little damsel just in the top of the mouth there. That is a beautiful rainbow. There he goes. Got him. Oh, that's a really good one. Oh. 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 He ate that just when I stopped before I was about to hang. Come on, buddy. Very silver fish. Good brown, I think. That's a lovely fish. Another lovely one. Get that drag right. That's a Chinook. Chinook salmon. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is amazing. I thought he looked really silver. Oh. That's a really, really good fish. Oh. Come on, that's a lovely salmon. You know I've never actually caught a, a good Chinook here. I've caught small ones. Come on, mate. Oh, that is a fantastic fish. Wow, wow. Holy moly. Is that a tank of a Chinook? Oh, or what? Look at that. The damsel in his black mouth. I am so, so happy. Look at that fish. My gosh. That is an amazingly beautiful salmon. Isn't that spectacular? All right, well, what is the time? 
All right, well, it's 12 o'clock. Um, been fishing for about three hours, maybe a little bit under. Um, pretty awesome session, as you saw for a morning here in the bright and tough conditions. So, Chinook Salmon, haven't caught one like that in yonks. Um, and then uh, the rainbow is fantastic. Missed another really good fish, not sure what it was, and then had that other chance as well and caught it ready. So, I'm going to push on, explore some other water this afternoon. I've got to get off the water early because I've got dinner arrangements tonight. So, got another few hours at it. Hopefully, we can uh, snag a brown. That's ultimately why I came here. Now, I've caught all the other species. So, uh, we'll keep pushing on. I'll, um, I might do a more detailed run through of the gear and, uh, and that might help you guys. Okay, so I pulled in to have a little bit of lunch. At the start, I don't know if I explained what I was fishing really clearly, so I'm gonna do that now for you guys. So my setup today has been really, really simple so far. I've got a 10 foot rod here. This is a, uh, a 10 foot eight weight Cortland rod. I like the eight weight in case I do need to fish deep, um, throw long lines and fish really deep. Also, big fish handles them really well. Um, I've just got a nice large arbor reel there. That one's a Shilton CR3. On that spooled up is a Type 5 Seek, which is a sweep line by Cortland. Um, sinks at five inches per second in the middle. So it um, has a nice sweeping action there when it fishes through the water. Now, the flies I'm fishing again are so ridiculously simple. I've got a little coral streamer there on the top dropper and then 10 foot below, I've got this little olive um, damsel. If you've seen any of my tying videos, I tie a damsel with an orange bead. It has a CDC body and a, uh, a mar olive marabou tail. It's pretty much the exact same fly, just with a copper bead. So, so simple. It's really about just, you know, finding those fish that want to eat. And this morning I was super lucky because I didn't expect to <laughs> get a bite this morning in those conditions before the cloud and wind rolled in. So, you know, that's how it goes. So, super simple setup. Um, I've got another couple of hours on the water here. I reckon I'll get another two hours of fishing in. So I'm gonna shoot across, have a look at the other side of the lake. At least you'll see what it looks like over there. Um, and then I might come back and re-drift through where I caught my fish earlier. I always like to re-fish the water I've caught them in. Uh, but because I put a few drifts through there, I'm not gonna go straight back there now. I'm gonna give it a break, have a look at some other water because I've caught them all around this lake and other areas, particularly the far side. Um, and then we'll come back, finish off here. We may catch fish, if not, doesn't matter. Awesome session already. So we'll get back into it. Set some drifts out wide here and just come nicely across the face of this point and push into the bay. That's the plan at least. I actually didn't mention before, I think I forgot when I was explaining the gear, the tibet I'm on is 3X. So that's 3X um, Corlin Ultra Premium Fluorocarbon. So super strong stuff. You can really, really give it to the fish if you need to, but pretty much what you need it for is you need it to uh, survive the take. Once you survive the take, if you don't break them off when they eat it, you'll be fine throughout the fight.
got him. Oh, no. Jeepers. Did you see that eat? <laughs> ah, he must have eaten that. It's failed. Gosh. My gosh. Geez, just casting into this point here with the slightest current on it. All right, well guys, I'm back at the ramp, nice and early. You know what? Really stoked with that session to catch a few lovely fish like that in about five really good hours of fishing. I've worked pretty hard for them. Um, and to get some other chances too. Missed a good one, hooked very briefly, another one on that point on the other side. Caught some redfin in this afternoon, quite a lot of like smallish ones, but it keeps it interesting, keeps it fun. So I couldn't hi couldn't recommend uh, this lake highly enough for you guys. If you want to catch a big trout, it's the place to go. It's absolutely awesome here. And uh, don't forget, I'll put links to all the gear and stuff that I used in the video in the description below. So click the little drop down, you'll see the rod lines, all that stuff that I used throughout the day here if you're interested in that. So um, yeah. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys next video. Cheers guys.